Check. Check. Welcome in, everybody. How are we doing today, tonight? Adam, good to see you. <clears throat> Scotty, good to see you. Sorry if things start a little late. Dinner ran late. Life is busy, but here we are. I'll give it just a few minutes since we are starting late. Rena, good to see you. Rudy, good to see you. Good to see all the regulars putting in the work after hours. Always a good thing. Not everybody can attend live. I get that, but people can. Shows dedication. That's good. Cornbread. What's up, man? Rudy, day was good. Um, I got a lot going on outside of trading. I got a big I'm an audio engineer and I got a big audio project going on. Um, got like 15 hours worth of work left and five hours to do it. So going to be burning late tonight after this meeting, but that's all right. Business doesn't last forever, so I'll take the work when I can get it. But uh, it was good, man. I uh, took two trades today, one with uh, one with Rena, actually. We hit... Um, bank sector, some puts. So I took two trades and that was it. Yeah, long shift, long day, long week, man. But it's all good, it's all good. We got 21 people, give it one or two more minutes and then uh, we'll dive in guys. Hopefully get a little participation from you all. 
Um, I gave you guys the ability to unmute your mics so you can ask questions whenever something or type it in the chat. I'll keep the chat open. But uh, yeah, beginner, uh, beginner trading lecture. It's a very broad term, very broad subject. Definitely cannot be done in one hour. Um, so I'm going to kind of summarize the, the most important things that I think are mo you know most important for everyone, especially the people that may have just joined with the weekend sale or something like that that we had. Um, kind of just want to go over some basics, some stuff to help guide you guys, maybe things to look for in the Discord, stuff like that. Um, but, you know, these, these things I do go over, each one of these, you know, there are lectures that we have done, we will do the little deep dive, like contract option Greeks, stuff like that. Um, actual stuff on like small portfolio stuff. We actually do trained psychology stuff. And so, of course, I can't go too in depth on all these because it'd be a very long lecture. So I'll try and get everything answered best I can. But uh, yeah, learning on the vocabulary for sure. Um, Livens, that's, that's a big thing. You know, people start typing in the chat, you know, trimming here, scaling here runners, BTO, buy to open, STO, sell, STC, sell to close type of stuff. It, it's a lot. Um, we kind of just talk like that, you know, because it's quick and we can't say, you know, I'm buying to open a Tesla contract because it's just, you know, chat, you know, the, the trade could be gone. And so there's, yeah, there's a lot of lingo. There's a lot of slang. But once you hear, you know, I think a few weeks, um, it'll definitely be, you um, a lot easier for it. Livens, did you just join uh, this week on a sale? And are you too, totally new to trading? Let me know in the chat. Um, be great if you are. Hopefully, we got some new members for sure. Been here two weeks. Nice, nice. Hopefully, it's good for you so far. All right, guys. Uh, welcome for all of you that are here. Uh, my Discord name is Starth One K. Um, I've been a staff member for a little bit, but I've been in the Discord for um, over three years now. So I've been doing lectures for about five or six months, enjoying it a lot, enjoy helping people. Um, but yeah, this is kind of just, like I said, a, a summarization beginner kind of to get you guys going. Um, kind of a, a checklist, some things, some new traders, even experienced traders, you know, you kind of need to do each day. Some things may seem obvious or silly to you guys, but when you when you look at what I'm saying and doing and actually do it day in and day out, it becomes so repetitious for you that you don't have to think about doing it. It's just very easy for you guys. And, and as time goes on, these things I show you guys will speed up greatly and it'll be just kind of very quick stuff for you guys, setting alerts, setting levels, stuff like that. Um, but really, you know, you guys, um, you know, I want to go over option contract basics. You know, what is theta? What is Delta? What is open interest? What is volume? Uh, my favorite, personally, building a trading plan. You know, you see me all the time on trade floor and DMs or on the lectures. This is number one for me. Um, some ways to reduce your risk. Um, and then that trading plan checklist example. Um, kind of the silly thing, just journey of a new trader, how they start out, how they think they're going to make some money and how they blow their port. I've shared this a few months back. A um, little train psychology motivation for you guys and then questions and charting if there's time. But um, yeah, as I go through this stuff, you guys, um, I'm going to talk about it. You know, I'll try and go as slow as I can and be descriptive as I can. If there's anything, just let me know in the chat if you need more description on it, stuff like that. Um, but with that, we're going to get going on this. Um, so first, the basics of the basics, um, option contract basics for you guys. Um, these things down here, these four are probably your most important. Um, so this is an option contract chain. I brought it up and used an example because there's people in the chat, including flips. Uh, they swung some one days till expiration, meaning it expires tomorrow. They swung some NVIDIA contracts. So I want to go over a couple things with you, um, not because of why they picked it, but just some things to look at. Um, but the biggest thing, you guys, that I think... Um, you know, your, your contract selection, whether it's NVIDIA, whether it's Bank of America, whatever it is, like the contract selection needs to make sense. Um, you know, I'm not saying or calling flips out or anybody like that, but when, when you swing a 900 call, 
that is 60 bucks out of money. Like it needs to make sense. You need to have a theory. And the reason, you know, he swung that at the end of the day is he made good money throughout the day. You know, I was in voice shout to him. We had some good trades. He had, I think Meta was the biggest winner. I think Spy or SPX calls as well. And so basically, I don't know the dollar amount that he made. We'll just say it's $5,000. You know, he has a huge portfolio. I'm throwing that number out there. He swung NVIDIA uh, 880 calls, I think, or 890, because he knows the risk if it opens at zero that his profits today, Thursday, still will outweigh this loss if it goes to zero. So maybe he bought one for, you know, he bought the ask at 325 bucks. So he has risk management of, you know, he knows this can go to zero and it'll still be profitable on the day today trading. And so stuff like that, when you guys see someone swinging, you know, need, it needs to make sense for your portfolio and for your risk. You know, you can't just dive into this um, that expires tomorrow because if NVIDIA does not gap up and you have a 900 call, um, let's take a look at a few things here. The first one is Theta. Um, you guys need to leave Theta open on your contracts or at least be aware of it anytime you're swinging something. So on a call, um, we're on, on, on a one DTE, like your Theta is 0 0.706. So this is $70 Theta that if NVIDIA open, so it closed at 858 roughly. If it opens at 858 tomorrow, you're going to lose roughly $70 in value of your contract. Okay, does that make sense, everybody? You bought the contract at $78 because it's so far out of the money. $40 out of the money, meaning the NVIDIA is trading at 858, so 860, and you bought a 900 call, your theta hit, if it opens flat, assuming IV and everything else, else is pretty much the same, you're going to take a $70 hit because it's a 1DT. And so I'll try and get into it a little bit later if we have some time, but your contract selection and how much time you buy has to make sense, you guys. If you want to swing NVIDIA, um, if it's not, you know, I would call these a lotto, you know, basically a, a lottery ticket, a lotto. Um, if you want to actually swing NVIDIA for a for a play, for a, a true play, you should buy next week contracts and it needs to be a reasonable strike. Okay. Um, so we talked about that a little bit. So Delta is the next one. Generally speaking, generally speaking, when you swing something with the time you buy, your strike should be a, a Delta of 30, a 0.3. a 0.3 or higher. I mean, this has a 32% chance of going in the money at expiration. And so your Delta needs to make sense, yes. There are a couple of things to look at with Delta. It says, if an NVIDIA moves, so, so say the market's open right now, or at 8.58, if, if NVIDIA moves to 8.59, a $1 move on an 8.70 contract, it's gonna pay you $32. So there's times, you guys, that you guys will buy this contract today, say it's today, and NVIDIA is pushing up, and you're like, oh, man, it's making a huge move. And you're like, why am I only up $6? Because you bought a contract with a delta of 0 0.06 saying, you know, if it moves up a dollar, when these guys are making $46 on this contract, you're making $6 because that is what the delta tells you. Um, and so your contract selection needs to make sense, uh, especially on swings, you guys. And another thing, if you guys start buying, you know, all the big, big tech stuff we buy, um, open interest and volume, I'm not going to say it doesn't matter, but we usually, I'll use that term loosely, we usually does not matter as much because there's, re there's really good liquidity. But if you're buying something like, I don't know, Starbucks or Roblox, something with, you know, that's less traded, you really want to pay attention to the volume of the open interest. The open interest is updated each day. So each morning that you open, that you can check, you know, today there was, you know, 6,400 contracts open, you know, carried over. And you want to check the open interest to see if people bought a bunch of these calls and it carried over, you know, it could be a bullish sign. Um, and then you also want to pay attention to volume. So volume is the option contracts traded that day, you know, 46,000 contracts, the 860 were exchanged today. And so this number is always fluid, ever moving. Um, and this is updated once a day, but again, I don't get too deep into this, but you may have to pay attention to open interest and volume on 
some slower moving stuff, um, some farther dated stuff. But um, does anybody have any questions on, you know, option contract basics? Again, River does some really good lectures on this. He does, he dedicates an entire hour to this. Um, I don't want to, you know, spend too much time on it, you know, because we don't have a whole lot of time. But if anybody has questions, let me know. Flips, good to see you, man. Why are you in here? You're, you're the goat, man. But glad to man, have you in here. I'm always educating myself, brother. I'm just here to listen. Oh, for sure, man. Just made you a co-host if you want to chat. All right, guys. Trade yeah. plan. This is the most important thing to me. Um, if you don't have a trade plan, you're already starting off losing. Um, but to me, someone let me know in the chat. Someone not mad flips, but someone in the chat or someone on mute your mic. When I say, what is a trade plan? I'm looking for a few specific things. What does that mean to you guys when I say you need to have a trade plan? Rena, entry, stop loss, targets. Nice. Anything else? Anything, anybody? Price target, risk management. Love that Latoya price or risk management. Very good, very good. Nice, you guys. All right. Kind of nailed it here a little bit. So, you know, you're trading checklist. Um, if anything, you know, if you only do if you only do a few things in the morning, the biggest thing you need to do, you need to chart, you know, your pre-market high low, uh, your previous day high low, and you know that's the that's at the the bare minimum four four little or two zones or four things you can chart minimum to start your day. You know, if you guys join flips every day in, in voice chat, you know, I'm on the west coast at six twenty for me. Every day he's saying, hey, pre-market this. I'm looking for this, or if we push here. I want to I want to come down to here. This is the pre-market level. He is building a, a trading plan for you guys every single day. And so when he gives you guys those levels, you should at the very minimum be marking that on your chart. Okay. Because he's doing, you know, he's he's giving you the, the, the upper hand, the one step. He's giving you the trade plan already. And then if you choose to sit out the open, which is fine, you know, maybe you sit and, and wait for that opening range to come. The next thing you need to do is you always need to find your current high and low of the day. At the minimum, you need, you guys need to know that. Like if you can't chart anything else, these zones can provide very, very good day trading opportunities each and every day. Um, but if you guys are just diving in, you don't have your pre-market time frame turned on, you're just diving in calls blindly because you've seen up candles to so you buy spy and it's at you know rejection spots rejected six times this week. It's like you guys are just doing yourself a disservice. So at the very minimum, your trade plan needs to be, you know, obviously charting before and then your pre-market high day, your previous high low, because you need to find these zones. I'll show you a quick example, you know, on the next slide, but minimum, but like you guys said in the chat, you know, once you chart, say you want to get into Tesla and Tesla, I don't even know where it's trading at right now to 70 something. Let's just use NVIDIA. Say you guys want to get into NVIDIA. Okay. You guys, before you even get started, you need to have a trade plan on charting you need to know, like some of the people said in the chat, you need to know where your stop out is, where your profits are. You know, your stop out point should be one level where you sell everything because that is where you're wrong. And your take profit, your take profit zone one, I like to have one to three zones if possible, but your take profit zone one better be bigger than your stop loss. If you say I'm gonna enter NVIDIA 860 calls, I want a 30% stop, I'm taking profit at 10%. Why are you risking 30% on a contract that's several thousand dollars just to take a 10%, you know, or, or 20% stop. I want to take profit at, at, at 10%. And that's like, you know, the one step forward, two steps back term. Like that's literally what that is, you guys. And so you need to enter a trade when it makes sense. So you cannot force stuff. There's, there's times where I hear flips say, I'm not trading this today, or I'm not trading this right now because it's not meeting my criteria. That's, that's what he's saying. He's saying, why would I get puts here when it doesn't, when, when the risk reward doesn't meet it? You know, like why would he risk seeing through 50% red on a bounce to make 10 or 12%? It just doesn't make sense, you guys. And so when you chart, you know, your trade plan, number one, it comes down to charting. And once you get good at charting, like I said, you can just start your day pre-market and I'll kind of show you guys in a little bit, but you just, you set alerts, you set a top alert, a bottom alert, you wait for one to break. And when it triggers, you check it. Okay. Next, if you guys are not good at trading the open, which that's fine. I'm not, I've been here for three years and it's still 
just it's just not for me. It's not good for my risk. You can wait for the morning opening range. You'll see River when he's when he's active, uh, when he's not on vacation. What I mean, he posts this every single day. And to to summarize, the opening range um, is the first ninety minutes of the day. So if you guys are on the West Coast, um, the market opens at six thirty, and the opening range is set at nine a.m. Okay, or eight a.m. Sorry, eight a.m. So ninety minutes. And so you have to ask him. I think I think the quote is. The opening range is an eighty percent chance the higher low of the day is set. So listen that again. You have an eighty percent chance that the higher or low of the day is set. So you can do your charting. You can chart your pre-market high low, your previous day high low, and then you can wait for the opening range to be set. And you have all this information, you guys, to take a very solid trade. You can you can trade something when when spy um, is coming down to the opening range bottom and on support. To me, that is a very, very good risk reward entry for some calls that try a bounce play. And so, again, if you wait for this opening range to be set, now you have this stuff up here that may be your pre-market high, your pre-market low, your current day high, maybe maybe something pushed up and came down to a opening range low and you're playing the bounce. You have all that zone to play with afterwards. And so stuff like this, again, you guys, it reduces risk, especially if you're a beginning trader. I can tell you how many times I profited off just waiting for the opening range to be set. I'll send a message to River. I said, hey, I like spy calls here, or I like AMD here. And he's like, love it. And I'll send him a screenshot of my gains or something like that, because this reduced so much risk for you guys. Um, regards to portfolio size, um, waiting for the first, you know, the market is open five and a half hours a day, you guys. It's okay to wait 90 minutes. You have all the rest of the day and all that information in front of you guys. And again, if you're totally new to trading, you know, take a paper trade. You know, it it builds it, it builds your confidence. It tests your theory. Um, there's nothing wrong with paper trading. Um, it's it's getting the reps in you guys because if you guys are totally new to trading and you don't have anything charted out, you know, I'm not going to say paper trade without charting, but at least it'll get some reps on your belt to build you guys a little bit of confidence. And then um, as you're charting, kind of to summarize your longer time frame confirmations. You know, when we're in on a trade, day trading, we're, we're usually in on the five minute, you know, because we like to play the 9 EMA, the 20 EMA. But I can guarantee, you know, Flip, Zaves, whoever, they checked longer term time frames, 30 minute, one hour, four hour. They know their profit zones based on this. And that's where you get your profit zones based on this and based on this section here, previous day, high and low. Uh, Adam, I paper trade for three months before my first trade. Man, I love that. That is... I wish everybody would do that because there's a lot of people in here that are struggling silently. They don't ask for help in DMs. They don't ask for help in portfolio help. And their port is just bleeding and bleeding and bleeding. And it's like, we have lectures five days a week. We have very, very smart people in this discord and we give advice like paper trading. People just do not do it. And they just blow, you know, hopefully not paycheck, but money, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars week after week, day after day. And it's like, if it's not working, you're not good. Like, you know, this takes time, you guys. Like, riding a bike takes time. Being a brain surgeon takes time. Being a pro athlete takes many years. It's like, you guys cannot just jump into this two weeks in and think you guys have it figured out because the market will chew you up and spit you out quickly and it's not going to care. Last but not least, um, another way to reduce risk management. Um, like tomorrow, everything is going to be zero DTEs, meaning same day expiration. Just because it's there does not mean you have to take it, you know, reduce some risk. If, if you're not good at uh, playing Bank of America BAC, you don't need to take a zero DT, take a next week. You know, that gives you a little bit of wiggle room. If it's chopping a little bit or moving up and down, you're plus five, minus five percent. You know, if you don't like that, take a next week expiration, let your trade plan uh, play out. So we have any questions on this. OK, I'm going to kind of put it all together here a little bit. So previous day high low, current day pre-market high low, stuff like that. Let's take a look. Okay. Normally, I'm not going to color code my chart like this in real life, but I want to point it out to you to show you guys, especially for the new and beginner traders. Okay. So let's look at this bluish zone here. That is your previous day, previous day high and low. Okay. NVIDIA. So this is the price action for NVIDIA today. So you want to mark out, you can either chart out support resistance lines, or you can make zones like I have, but here is NVIDIA's yesterday high. Here's NVIDIA's low. 
you mark that level and you draw it out to today. So you know, hey, if we're pushing up and look at lo and behold, first time NVIDIA got here, what did it do, you guys? It rejected at the previous day high zone, okay? Oh, I need to turn off annotations. Nicholas accidentally drew. That's all right. Hopefully it was an honest mistake. No worries, man. Clear drawings. All right. So NVIDIA, previous day high-low. And what else do we want to set? Pre-market high-low are these red zones. So personally, when I say the word pre-market, that is pre, that is the next day. Um, I want to, you know, I want to, sorry, we got drawings on the string. We, need to start. The chart um, I mark every we want to mark um, the pre-market, which is, this is when the day ends and this is a new day. So for me, I just mark the pre-market low as this current day. You can come back and mark this zone here if you'd like to, whenever you came back to it, but it certainly could come into play. But for me, I personally just mark the current day, which is today, the pre-market low, which is this red zone. So I would, I would definitely do this. I would draw this pocket zone here and I would draw my pre-market high. So we open the day here, you know, we start the new day here and that's when the market opens. This is all pre-market data for anybody who doesn't know. And so this is the pre-market high, okay? And now, Say you set out the opening range. So you set out the first 90 minutes of the day, and the opening range is set. So you set a high Started, and a low. Um, I, I just went right there to check, guys. And um, sorry, sorry to interrupt you, but I put there all the levels that I put daily. Um, oh, what's up? So pre market high, low, previous day, last day close. Yep, yep. Last day open, weekly high and low. Yeah. And so you guys, when you read flips, say something like weekly high and low, you're going to say, well, how's he find that? If you, again, if you listen in the chat pre-market, he's going, hey, guys, I looked at the four hour and NVIDIA says this, or, you know, Tesla broke this big level. I'm looking at the four hour here. It's got room to this. He's not just throwing out levels. He's looking at probably a four hour chart or longer and saying, hey, this is NVIDIA, but hey, uh, Tesla broke this structure here from the week. It's a Friday. Man, you guys, we got room to last week's low of, of whatever it is. And so, yeah, like it says, if you read this chat or take a screenshot, pre-market high-low day, previous day high-low, got that. Uh, previous day close, that's a good one. This zone here, I look at that. Yep, closed here. Look at where we bounced. Uh, weekly high-low, consolidation. Yep, okay. So you're fine, Flips. But yeah, say we, say we open the opening range, you mark your high and low. And so now, you guys, we have all this information to play off of. So say... Say flips took calls at the open, we profited, okay, he sold or stopped out, whatever on runners, we come down, say we took puts and say, you're like, okay, now this fits my risk management. I have 90 minutes of information to play with, okay? Now let's look at how often this plays and comes into play. We pushed up to yesterday's high rejected. You could have, if you wanted to, taken puts there, okay? You take puts down to where, now where's your tar your targets at? Take it to this pre-market zone here because look at, we come down here, look where we bounced first. First touch, we bounce this pre-market low zone. Even the open, if you took that opening candle, look at that zone that we bounced in here, okay? We come down to here to this opening range low and say you take calls here. Say you bottom snipe, say this is 8, 8 a.m. for me and I get calls here. Okay, where's my first target? Like Flip said, look left, previous day close, pre-market zone here. So we sell down and we push up and look at, lo and behold, the first rejection area is our pre-market low. Okay, you guys, don't make this harder than it is. Again, if you guys chart nothing at all because you're not good at it, all these zones, again, can give you very, very good levels to play off of. Or say we push up and now we're kind of making a little flag here and you're saying, you know what? I'm entering calls somewhere in here. My stop out now because I have all this information today is below pre-market zones, okay? Say you entered on this candle here. You say, come down, wick up, come down, wick up. Seeing those wicks here on the five minute time frame should give you confidence that buyers are here strong at this pre-market level. Okay, we push up and guess where we rejected and where you can take profit. Pre-market high again, this zone here again. Okay, yeah. so you come up, you trim or take all, maybe you hold. VWAP, come back down and look at, again, previous resistance is now support, you guys. And so- Yep. Again, building a trading plan, knowing your stop losses. Again, 
just based on one, two, three, four little zones here, or, or I guess five with the opening range set. Like can I give is, you? Can I give you a, a an easy one? What's up, man? This is an easy one for anybody who's listening. You want to clear that real quick? I'll show you a very easy one. Uh, clear the chart. Uh, I can't clear these, but I can, I can pull up. Uh, I can pull up Nvidia in real time, man. Oh, What's perfect, up? perfect, perfect. This is for anybody that's watching them. You know, only 34 people was going to be here. You're going to love something that I do every single day. This is on the five-minute chart, right? Uh-huh. Okay, grab, uh, grab yeah. Fibonacci retracement. Okay. And go from the top of the, the second five-minute candle. Yep. And bring it to the lowest of the day. There you okay. go. Congratulations. Look at all those bounces, especially the hammer at around uh, 9.30, 10.30. Look, look at all those levels. Yeah, man, you guys, Flips loves Fibs. He's always like, hey, I retraced, so I made it white so you guys can stand out. Another thing, you guys, yep. if you don't, like he said, make it really easy. If you don't chart anything else, if you if you wait the opening range every day, throw on a Fib, let's look at how well this respects. It's like, I had no idea how this would line up, and he just said throw a Fib on. We come down, we push. Look, look at that fib throughout, throughout the day. Yep. Look at that. Push, Fib. Push down, Fib. Push up. Like look at, that, look at that hammer, guys. <laughs> yep, hammer right here. Yep. Like, if you see this action here, consolidation, we come down and test. You no, know, you always see flips or anyone, whether in calls or puts, break and retest, break and retest, or in puts, break down and retest is what we always want, you guys. You don't want to buy the top of these candles. You don't want to buy like if flips was in on this bull flag here. This is his sell, and if you guys are buying this to chase, you're literally buying his trims or his sales, you guys. You you want to buy when stuff is on sale, S-A-L-E, not S-E-L. So when stuff is on sale, like a Black Friday sale, you want to buy when stuff is down here above all this zone, all this information, you guys. And look, we push it back up above the EMAs and VWAP. Like you have this entire zone here of confidence and confirmation that if you buy this breakout, you say, hey, I am going to make it stop me out under 844 zone. You have this whole information here, but man, I, I get on FIB sometimes and I get off them and I see stuff like this. I'm like, man, it's just too easy. Like, it's just, I don't know how it works, but you know, computers are smart. You guys, these are algos trading like this. This is the bread and butter stuff like that. You guys, if, like I said, if, if you have no other charts in your lines, throw on some FIBs, throw on that pre-market stuff that we talked about. Um, but yeah, that'll that'll get you guys going. <laughs> if you want to, if you want to, I'm I'm sorry, one K. I'll just listen to you. And no, you're fine. I, What's up? I love I love levels. That's that's how I trade. Um, uh huh. If if you you see the the levels that we that we wrote down in the chat, plus, um, on top of those levels, you draw your fibs. Now the lines that match between the pre mark the the your levels that you did in the morning, plus the fib uh -huh. level. When it, all those levels that match. Those are the ones you keep. Everything else you raise. That way, that's where you don't have fifty thousand lines in your, in yep. your, in your charge. But then those are your clear understanding lines. That's where eighty percent can be a rejection or resistance, and trading yep. options is a probability kind of game. So yep. you know, so that's the that's the reason I, I do open the range. I do all my levels in the morning, usually in the computer early, doing all my levels, and then mm -hmm. after that, after the opening range and the movement happens, I throw my fibs on top of it. Once yep. I have my levels that I drew match with some levels that the Fibonacci uh, retracement gives me, those are the levels that I trade the day with. And the opening yep. range of those levels is the hold. Those are the swings. And now I start using the EMAs, the retracement yep. to the EMAs for the continuation for another leg up or another leg down. And that's yep. the reason why we bought NVIDIA or Meta today from the bottom and we say hold. You know, so hopefully those eight eighty. Yeah, yeah, you're today. you're harp on that meta forever, and it's like I hope people listen. You're just like, hey, of all the stocks, this is what I like today because of flow and the stuff. And it's like this paid man. I mean, yeah, kind of bear flag down in here, but like, like if you guys, okay, if you guys are buying this zone here and you're freaking out on red, and you sell this candle, like you're gonna be kicking yourself because you look left and it's like, man, you sold at this bounce zone, and so again, you know, this kind of skips ahead to what I want to talk about next, but it's like. If you guys are freaking out on a red trade that is red, you either got a shit entry because you chased or you're in super heavy and you can't stomach this 20, 25% down because it's like, 
if you enter here, you have to tell yourself, okay, they're sellers, but they should bounce it here. And if not, you know, you continue to hold. But if if you buy the top of this candle here thinking, oh, here, here comes the breakout. Now you got to sit through all this red because you either don't want to stop or don't have a stop. And it's like, then you sell and then we bounce and you go, man, why the hell did I sell? It's like, again, you guys, it, it comes down to charting. There's not a day that flips or anybody else that's experienced takes a trade without knowing where their stop zones are every single day, every single trade, you guys. And so like you, you could miss the puts here, but you better be looking for calls here because the opening range, this was the opening range low, you guys, and it bounced right here. And like, I don't play meta a whole lot. I have very few lines as you can see, but it's like, you cannot take puts here and you cannot, you know, cut calls here. If you enter and you see a little bit of red and you freak out. That tells me, I got some notes on my, on my checklist here, I forgot to mention, but when I see stuff in the chat of, you know, I'm down 30%, you guys, should I cut or sell? Or the opposite, I'm up 40%, what should I do? Like, I get it if you're new and, you know, like like if Flips alerts this and maybe he's busy with his other classes or stuff, his, his other job, and you're up 40%, that, that's fine to ask. But if you guys are experienced traders and he gives levels every single day, and you guys are like, oh, I'm up 120%. What should I do here? And, you, and I'm like, okay, how many contracts you got? And you're like, 10. Have you trimmed? No. It's like, that's poor trading. That's poor. That's even poor risk management because you're just trading without a plan. You probably want to throw some stuff in gains tab. You know, that's great for the Instagram, but it's like, you guys got to have a trade plan. Okay. So I get it. You know, if, if you're newer and maybe follow an alert and maybe they're not answering, you're like, hey, I'm down 25%. What should I do here? That's fine. But if you guys are just, blindly taking trades and you've been here a long time and you're still not charting i don't have a whole lot of sympathy i'll help you but it's like i don't have a whole lot of sympathy for you guys because you entered with no trade plan um how do you pull up that fibonacci spike are you in weeble um yes or no if that's what you're asking if you're in weeble i'll show you where it's at um if not no think or swim uh someone in the chat can help you find it or tomorrow or even tonight, just send a, a DM um, to one of the support members. They might be able to help you, Spike. Um, I'm slowly coming over to Thinkorswim, but I don't know where it's at the top of my head. I'm not uh, in, in, think, in Thinkorswim is on the on the top uh, right or on the bottom uh, right. There's a little oh. arrow. It's like a like a little clicking arrow, and you mm -hmm. can click on that, and it looks like a, like a percentage sign. Cool. All right, guys. So we talked about sending out the opening range. We talked about charting levels. Another way you guys can reduce risk. Um, you know, I'm not a pro, but I, I do have experience. But every single day or every single week, early in the week, I trade these slower moving names because, like I said, it gets my reps in. It helps me get a feel for the market. You know, Monday is usually a range day. These are slower moving, easier trades to manage. I can buy two to four weeks of time with this for 100, 150 bucks and get a few contracts and be stress-free through a little bit of chop and take my trade plan. And so money through Tuesday, money through Wednesday-ish, um, and even Thursday and Friday, I trade these all the time, um, especially if you guys are on a smaller port or new traders. Take a screenshot of this, but I do lectures on beginner or small port trading all the time. But trade stuff like this, chart stuff like this, send me a DM. Say, hey, I'm looking at Delta Airlines here. Um, I think it's good for some calls. What do you think? Um, but if you send me something like that, I'm going to test you guys because I don't, you know, I don't hold hands. I'm going to say, Hey, you know, you like calls here. Where's your stop out point? And I want you to tell me, and I'm going to say, Hey, where's your take profit. Okay. Or if you're like, Hey, I like puts. I'm going to say, okay, why do you like puts Delta airlines been going up six days straight, even with spies selling off yesterday, Delta airlines said not, why do you like puts here? You know, if you just tell me just because, you know, that's not a good reason. So I'll definitely help you guys. If you send me a DM and a chart, but you got to have a trade plan. I'm not just, or, or the opposite. If you, if you just say, Hey, will you let me know when you're in a play? Yeah. You know, I, I want you guys to work. It's not because I'm being greedy or selfish, but just saying, Hey, I'm taking Delta airlines, uh, 52 call here. That does nothing for you guys. That does not help you guys learn. So the goal is here. You guys are here five days a week. You're in the lectures five days a week, like start taking some trade and accountability guys. But like I said, send me some alerts. It can be alert on Amazon, AMD, whatever it is but make sure you have a trade plan if you're going to ask me questions. All right. So reducing risk early in the week, like I said, I take these, but I actually trade these every day, but then later in the week too, um, when things get a little bit cheaper and I might have a buffer, you know, maybe I'm up five or $600 in the week, you know, I'll start trading some Amazon, some Tesla, some Nvidia when I can take a little bit of risk on. But for me, 
Monday morning Tesla, Monday morning Nvidia, that's not for me. You know, first trade of the day, you know, market opens on a Monday. That is not for me because the worst thing you can do is take back to back losses Monday morning. You're sitting there, you took some big losses, your, your port's down 10, 12, 14%, whatever it is. And everyone in gains tab is cheering, everyone on trade floors cheering because you're in a trade opposite of the trend. And now you're you're sitting there kind of lost. And so you guys, the, the goal is to build that profit during the week. Um, you want to end the week green. You can have red days. You know, if you have a smart pol portfolio, you can be up 25 bucks in the week. You can take a $5 loss today or $10 loss. That's fine. In the week green. You know, if you're up a thousand dollars, you know, on a Thursday, there is no way, no way you should end red. You should look at that thousand dollar profit and either be done for the week or you say, you know what? I'm only going to give up max $200 tomorrow. You know, I might trade with flips. Maybe he alerts a stop out. I don't take it. I don't hear it. And I take a $200 loss max. You should log off the day. 800 bucks a week, you guys. Like, think about stuff like that. What that can do. Like, you see the number on your portfolio and, and, and then your on your phone, but it's like, 800 bucks in front of you, like that's a few car payments that could be help with a mortgage payment. That's food on the table. You know, you guys need to realize what that money is worth to you when you have a really good money through Thursday. And then Friday, you're like, oh, I ended the week red. There is no reason for that, you guys. Um, let's see. Is there an active trade tab for ideas for these, Bree? Do you mean like these slower movers? Um, there's not an active trade tab, um, but there's a lot of people who trade them. Um, but, but again, you know, this will challenge you or I'll challenge you if you're, if maybe you're good at trading or charting, but maybe you're not send me a chart. It can be bank of America and it can literally have three lines on it. And I'm going to help you because it says, Hey, Bree, you, you DM'd me and it shows you want to learn and you want to help with it. But if you're just say, Hey, do you like BAC here? I'm going to say, okay, well, why? But if you see me a chart and literally it's three lines, I'm going to say, okay, it looks good. It's a good start, but let's add to it, you know? Why do you like this setup here? What, what do you look at here? And I'll help you chart with it. But you guys you got to put in a little bit of work because I spend a lot of times in DMs, which is fine, but it's like, you know, it takes a lot of time mentally and emotionally for me. So it's like, I don't want to waste my time, you know, with people. So not to sound rude, but put some work in you guys. Like I said, it takes very little effort to chart. And if you show effort, I'm going to help every single one of you every single time. Um, but yeah, take a screenshot on these and Bree um, also DM me. Um, and I'll send you a full list. Um, this isn't really a small port class. I might do that next week, um, but I do have some other names other than this, but there's some, man, Rena, are you in here? We took a, was it BAC or C? Like people think these trades don't move. I trimmed, I think C puts at 30% today, 28%, a runner at 48. I traded BAC today. I think I took 20 something percent. Like these pay, one of these in one of these sectors pay every single day, you guys. 20% is 20%. Whether you're taking 20% on Apple or 20% on Carvel Cruise Lines, it's 20% of your entry price. Whether your total entry is $400, so that's maybe that's 20 contracts of CCL or 400 contracts is three of Apple. Whatever it is, your full position size, 20% is 20%, you guys. And so I choose to stack my base hits, as they say, those 20, 30 percenters, 15% on these slower moving trades early in the week, because it just, it builds so much confidence, you guys, when you can take a couple of trades, DM some people, your, your ideas, and then, you know, send the screenshots, not because you're bragging, but like, it, it's your trade plan working in front of you. That's a huge confidence builder, you guys. Yeah, it was a C. Um, what were we in? We were in, this is such a good trade. I was in this, and I messaged her, I said, hey, there's a lot of banks weakness. I sent this chart here at this trend line, a lot of weakness. And she's like, I'm already in and I'm up. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, because if you guys don't know Rena um, in the discord, she trades like energy and financials pretty much exclusively. And she's super good at these. And it's like, you guys want to have 50 things in your watch. Like I got 20 things in my watch list here. Small port cheapies. I got uh, 28 things like, Every single one of these will pay each and every day guaranteed. Or I mean, one of these will pay guaranteed each and si every single day. If KO is chopping or not like a price action, Disney, I guarantee is moving. But yeah, see, we hit this trade here. Not to get sidetracked. Longer time frame confirmation. I seen this red zone rejecting. And I said, hey, financials look weak. A lot of seller volume. She said, hey, I like it. Me too. 
sold here, I think, was my trim. And then I said, I'll be out at 6107 or 6106. And I sold my runner here. And so, you guys, these trades, these slower movers pay so well every single week. It's fine if we trade tech with flips every single day in flip in a voice chat. He's good at it. He should be trading that because he makes us all a lot of money. But if it's not your risk profile for your um, expertise, your experience, or your, um, your your portfolio size, like, again, send me a DM. Say I want some help these smaller, slower movers, and I can help you guys. Um, so, again, what's the point? Just to sum it all up, um, do you guys see a theme here of just the reoccurring thing of how to reduce risk management early in the week? Um, I want you guys to focus on charting, taking the slower movers, like I said. DMs are always open. Um, but again, if you just say, Hey, I want Tesla calls here, I'm going to say why, or what's the reasoning. Um, but again, build that buffer in the week, you guys, um, you know, those 10 or $30 trades, those winners Monday and Tuesday, you might get one or two of them each day. You say, Hey, 20 bucks is nothing, but you start looking at the week and you got a smart, small portfolio, like $2,000 or under a thousand dollars or under. And you look at Friday and you're like, man, I'm up 125 bucks, 150 bucks because you kept stacking those $25 winners. That grows the portfolio massively. And you guys do that for four weeks straight. And then maybe you join voice chat because you got a bigger portfolio and you can take a little more risk on. But I'm telling you guys, those 25, 30, 40, $50 wins, those stack up. When you guys see 50 bucks on your profit and you don't take it because you're greedy, like, Man, you guys, like that adds up so quick. Um, yeah, Rena, she she trades energy a lot. She'll do XLE. Um, what else do we trade, Rena? Um, Exom. Uh, what's the other one? What's the other energy one? It's usually up here. She'll probably tell us in the chat. I don't know. I'm drawing a blank here. I don't know. What else is in the energy sector? Exxon. I don't know. Brain fart. Sorry, guys. Yeah, Oxy, XLE, bank sector. CVX. Thank you. Somebody. Man, someone's got the brain power. I don't know why it's not in the watch list anymore. Thank you, Spike. But yeah, you guys, that stuff, they pay and they pay very well. And so, you know, put a little bit of work in. Um, it doesn't take much, you guys, but, um, but yeah. Some motivation for you guys, again, some silly charts, but it's the truth because I know somebody in the chat right now or someone in Discord is struggling. They look at all this BS on YouTube. You know, if, if this guy really had a 90% win rate day in and day out, he'd be on a yacht somewhere drinking a pina colada and he wouldn't be making these YouTube videos, I can tell you that. If there's any indicator there's 90% win rate, we would all know about it right now and we would have multi-million dollar ports because we could full port every single trade with no stops. But the reality is that's not true. And so you guys ignore the noise on YouTube. There, There's very few videos on YouTube that are worth watching. You can say, hey, how to use a Fibonacci extension on YouTube. That's fine. Or how to use VWAP or whatever. But to do stuff like this, you guys, like, do not follow this. This is for clicks. This is for money. They probably make most of their money from these views and not actual trading. Not saying these people, I don't know who they are, are not real traders. but you guys ignore this because, you know, it's just not helping you. We have, again, we have lectures five days a week. Uh, we have support staff here. We have really good trades that are not support staff. We got green members, Flips, Zabes, um, everybody else, drawing a blank. Tilio, like Tilio's newsletter, every week, you guys, this is my trade plan every single week. Sunday, I wait for, you know, Tilio's newsletter to come out. I read everything, especially with the FOMC this week. I read his newsletter. I say, what are his new comments on that? What does he think of the markets? What, what's his sentiment? What is his options flow that he's seen? What are, what are some you know stocks he's looking at or what do he add to his portfolio? Monday morning, I jump on a VC with flips. I wait for the opening range to be set. I trade those slower movers. You know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I trade the Apple, the Amazon, the Teslas. And then Friday, we have some fun with zero DTs because if I'm up on the week, you know, that is my trade plan every single week. That is my my what I do every single week, you know, to those newsletters on every Sunday, you guys should watch that. But yeah, day one is a trader, you guys. Everybody wants to do this. Again, I keep using flips as an example. If you're in voice chat flips, sure, take these with them. 
But if you're training on your own and you, and you think you got this, you can figure it out and you're going to be, other than that John guy, <laughs> he yellowed something yesterday in FOMC. Good for him. He man. yellowed 50, he made like man. K. What's up, brother? Yeah, he yellowed, he yellowed 50,000 in, in, uh, in my spy calls. And he sold it like at 503 when he went to 508. I did the math. He would have been like at 317. Oh, my God. <laughs> but the guy also had a bunch in his portfolio, too. So he was either had some experience or had a lot of money to burn or take a chance with flips. But, but yeah, if you guys are new, um, stay at the spy, especially the SPX, or at least wait for flips or someone to alert it because, like, they're doing it for a reason. He watched flow. He watched levels. He always says, I need all my sectors to line up. There's a reason he's, he's saying that and doing that. You know, like, people are – we need a Hail Mary, we need a Hail Mary. It's like, he's not just going to do it to do it. He's going to do it and stuff lines up because it's like, there's times, you guys, there's two to 300 people in voice chat. Do you think he's just going to blindly throw something out and have 300 people DMing him and message him a trade for? He's taking every single play with us, you guys. He does not want anybody to lose money, including himself. So he has risk management. So, you know, take it when he does. But if you guys are new to trading, do not do stuff like this. Again, this is a cheesy chart, but I like doing it. Go to the lectures. I'm just going to scrub through these. Attend the lectures. Charting. Send them to people. Paper trade. Build a strategy. You guys do this for, uh, who was that? Adam? He said he paper trade for how many months? I'm scrolling up. Man, he said like a month or three months. Like, that's the way you do it, you guys. Like, buy a quarterly membership here. Go to these lectures. And literally, maybe, like, if you have discipline, I know we're here to make money and you want to take the alerts and it's great, but it's like, if you can build discipline for even a month on a quarterly subscription you guys have here, like just going to lectures every night and charting and DMing the smart people and say, you know, what do you think of this? And paper trade to build a strategy. Those next two or three or few months after that, you guys are going to be wildly successful. You're going to be like, man, why did I try and skip all these steps? Why did I not chart? Why did I not go to lectures? Why did I not do this, you know, position sizing? It's like, it's insane. But when it clicks for you guys, you're literally going to like punch yourself and go, why did I fight it so bad? You know, why did I not use the education at senior? You know, why am, why is the discord and, and spy calls? And I think I'm taking puts just because we're at this zone here. It's like, you know, use what we have in here. OT, you guys, because it's like, there's a reason, you know, we are a well-oiled machine. We're all working together. We're just a big wave. We're a small wave in a big wave of the market. And we're just following big money wherever it's going. You know, if the, if the market is pushing SPY up, we are just riding the coattails and we are making money with everybody else that is in SPY calls. There's no reason when we get a SPY candle. Like this 30 here, this 30 minute candle here. Yes, we're pushing pre-market, but this 30 minute candle here that engulfed all this morning zone there's no reason. Yes, you can take puts. Obviously, they paid. But I see this candle here in the 30 minute. I'm thinking break and retest. So break out and retest. Enter here. That is my only thought. I'm not thinking puts, puts, puts. I'm thinking, okay, we are breaking all this consolidation BS. I see this huge engulfing candle here. I'm immediately thinking break and retest. And I am riding this wave with the market, you guys. You guys do not want to go against the market. Again, we are just... Very, very tiny fish in a very, very big ocean of money moving. Like your $1,000 entry, your $10,000 entry, that does not do anything to move the market. And we're just riding the wave with everybody else. So you guys use the education here. Use what, you know, if people are in calls, do that as well. Or say, hey, you know, Flips, you're in Tesla calls. What, what's your what's your profit target? I got to go to a meeting so I can mark them. And he's going to tell you. Or what is your stop out point? He's going to tell you. You know, don't don't go against an experienced trader and getting puts because you think, oh, we're just pushing up to this level here. It's like, he's looking at something for a reason. And there's a reason he's getting Tesla calls or whatever is, or meta, you know, he's seen flow or a level, like there's a reason for that, you know? Does anybody have any questions on this cheesy chart? If not, we're gonna keep rolling. We started late, so we're gonna go late. But some motivation for you guys. Um, I post this all the time, but you know, it's just motivation. You guys, there's 252 on average, depends on when Christmas lands and when on New Year's Day lands, all that stuff. 
There's 252 trading days in a year. I need a drink of water. We don't trade the weekends, so Monday through Friday. 252 trading days a year. The $100 a day that you skip out on because you don't think it's good enough, that's 25K at the end of the year. 25K. 25K, what is that? Half of a car. That's your student loans. That's money, down payment for a house. Like that's what you guys are skipping out on because $100 a day is not good enough for you to post and gain tab. $200 a day, 50K a year. That's some people's salary, you guys. 200 bucks a day, there's days in voice chat where I or others can make that in 15, 30 minutes. $200 a day, you guys make that 30 minutes. And you guys give it, there's days where you give that all back and then you in red 200, you know, or 200 and you go to 500. Okay. Maybe your quota or, or goal is 200 a day and you're up 500, you know, so that's a couple of days worth of work. And it's like, that's 50 K you guys at the end of the year. Think about what this can do. I would say for your family, for yourself, whatever it is, you want to take like that dream vacation, that all inclusive vacation where you can buy all the drinks you want, all the food you want and have to nickel and dime it and worry about it. Like this is where it's at. You guys. 1% a day on a $1,000 portfolio is 12K at the end of the year, 1% a day. So that's gradually going to get harder because it's 12%. Oh, we got someone at our door. It's 12% or sorry, and I'm, I'm tired. It is 1% on your portfolio balance each day. So if you start your balance at 1% tomorrow, 1% gain is 10 bucks. Easy. Okay. But later on during the week or during, during the month or the year, 1% of your balance is growing. So now it's 1% of 12,000, you know? So that number for 1% day is a little bit bigger. But for me, you know, your daily goals, this is kind of what I like to look at. I don't force stuff. I don't, I don't, I don't force a trade to try and get my quotas. But I have this number because I know what this can do for myself, for bills, for student loans, for my car payment. Like I know what this can do. Um, but again, and, you know, Position sizing stuff, you guys, 5K account, 3 to 5% entry, you know, so 5% entry, you know, flips alerts, a Tesla call. It's not going to be that round of a number, but say it's 250 bucks. Like, you know what? I can do this because it's my risk management. It's 5%. Okay. And you take 20%, 50 bucks. Like I said, what I talked about earlier, those 50 bucks a day, how much that stacks up. Okay. You make 50 bucks with him on the first trade of the day, first 15 minutes. We still got five and a half hours left to trade. And you want to get five, or if you want to get hundred bucks a day, you only need two trades, you guys. Two 20 percenters can be that hundred dollars a day on a 5K account. This is the shit that adds up, you guys. Everybody skips and bluffs on and they don't take it serious. But like, you just need a couple 20 percenters and like it adds up so fast, you guys. Here in Texas, minimum wage is 15 bucks. We make hundred bucks in five minutes. Yeah, think about that. Like, and there's, there's also times you guys, you know, flips has another job or maybe several jobs, but when he trades, he knows when he has a good morning, when he hits better and video open, he goes, all right, guys, I'm done for the day. Like he's serious because he knows what this does, however much he made on that day. He knows what that adds up to. And also it's like, why should he or anybody else stare at charts for five and a half hours? If he made that kind of money, you know, a lot of money, several thousand probably in a few minutes, you guys, like they're like, it is a blessing to make a several hundred dollars or several thousand or whatever your goal is in 30 minutes of work, like for pushing a few buttons, he says calls, you get in calls and boom, you make 50 bucks, hundred bucks, a thousand, whatever it is. And we're out 15, 17, 20 minutes later. That is a blessing that we know how to trade options. We have OT as, you know, an ex as a, as an avenue for money. You know, there's people working all day for 200 bucks a day or whatever it is for minimum wage, but it's like, Think about this, you guys, and what this can do next time. You're like, you know what? 150 bucks doesn't mean shit to me. Think about that, you guys. Latoya, I made 30 bucks today and left happily. Yes, that stacks, that adds up. Man, you guys, if you come, not to brag about that small port lecture, but I'm doing a small portfolio lecture the next couple of weeks, the next Tuesday, the week after. I'm going to show you guys, because I'm doing a challenge myself, how quick 30 bucks a day, $30 trades adds up. You know, and I have proof. I have a profit and loss journal I've been keeping track every single time. And Panada, good to have you, man. Important to avoid overtrading and give back. And Panada, you got anything to say? I'll mute the mic, man. What's up?
Anything to add? Uh, to make you, uh... No, I mean, I, I, I love it. I'm here listening, learning, and uh, the same thing. I mean, for me, as I always, when I said that, you know, when we see these gains like 300, 400, and 300%, whatever, that's always a runner after we paid, we took profits, we secured profits. And uh, and I always tell to when I do one-on-ones or anything, like do when you see 15% or 20%, you should take it. Like never wait until, you know, there's a this mistake when we are trading on scalping that you, you want to keep that percentage going and you need to be aware of what's the size of what you're uh, trading with. Because sometimes if I'm trading with a $20,000 port, and I see 10% out of certain amount, that's going to be 400 bucks, 300 bucks. But if I'm trading with $200, 10% is huge. So I always try mm-hmm. to focus on the percentage and and to not over trade. Like sometimes when we say, listen, you don't need to be in a trade every time. You can just grab two trades a day and make that 100 bucks. And that's a lot of money until you start growing that port. Like the same way we're doing with a challenge with uh, Grizzly. Like we started mm-hmm. really slow. And then when you have gains on top, you can start risking a little more. So I think that's very nice. But I'm, I, I do agree with everything you're saying. I love it. For sure. Yeah, and I want to I touch on two things he mentioned, guys. So um, Grizzly's port, if you guys are that crypto challenge, you notice like he he's being transparent. He's saying 10% position size. And he's saying, here's where I'm entering. And you know, it's a, what is he doing? A 5k to 50k or something crazy that he's going to, he's going to hit that. You guys, it's crazy. And you guys that are not doing it, you're going to go, man, why did I not do that? But anyway, he's giving you position sizing on his tab. And then what's he do when we hit a winner, he posts a screenshot of the portfolio size to hold himself accountable and everybody else. Like if I think that port, is it like that challenge is like 8k or 9k now? Like if you guys are doing the same thing as him and you're at 20k, it means you have bad risk management or you're going heavy when he's not, and it, eventually it's going to hurt you guys. And so he and, and, and Panada and other people, we're, we're doing things day in and day out to teach you guys how to how to be successful. And it's like, you guys you want to skip the steps and you guys want to be rich overnight. It just, it does not work that way. And another thing Empanada said, he goes, you know, when I'm in trades, you know, maybe he's in five or 10 contracts and he trims, you know, maybe he's in 10 apples and he trims, he's going to trim five or six or seven of those because what that does is, it secures some money and it reduced risk for the remaining contracts. So the remaining contracts he has a little bit of wiggle room that can move up and down. And so if he trimmed five or six or seven at 20 or 25%, he has wiggle room. I guarantee he has a stop at or above entry. But if he say he forgot and it came down and went red, he still secured on those seven contracts that he's probably still green overall on that. And so you guys, when you have one or two contracts, when the empanada says trim or take all, and you have one or two, you should be taking all because you're grateful for the money and you're grateful for the alert because you need to build the portfolio. And then when things go on and you build your, and you pour it up a little bit more and you have six, seven, eight, nine, ten contracts, then when he says trim, you trim. And then that's your reward, you guys. That is your reward, those runners that we always say. That's your reward for doing the charting, doing the hard work, putting your work in after hours, coming to these lectures. Those runners that go 40, 50, 60%, that is where you flex on the gains tab. That is where you tell your parents, your family, your friends, you, you hit this good trade. And that's where you pat yourself on the back because that's what trading's all about. Is you put in the work, you chart, you do this, and it's like, oh man, something ran to 200% and hold a runner. It's like, well, how many did you have? Well, I had 10. I stole all here. Well, no, sell some trim. But like if your price targets, you know, I don't have a chart, but if your price target's still up here, Hold one. If you hit price target one and two, that's when you hold a runner and reward yourself for those big plays. Because when you hit those nice trends, like that's what you want. That's what everybody wants, you know? And so reward yourself for that, you guys. But you guys, you cannot skip the steps. You got to take the one or two contracts and take those gains, you guys. Um, yeah, I love everyone's input flips and everybody else. Um, Latoya, what's a good port starter size? That is a hard question to ask. So I have people DM me that say, hey, I'm not going to reveal names, but literally this week says, I have a $250 port. I'm struggling. I'm going up and down. I can't gain traction. I said, okay, what are you trading? You know, and they kind of, I don't know the exact conversation. I'm not going to pull it up, but I immediately sent them my link to the small port recorded lecture. And I said, hey, you know, start trading 
those slower mover names that we that we went over Delta Airlines, uh, BAC, DraftKings, um, XLE, XLF. Um, like start trading those and build up because I'm telling you, and I told that person, they start stacking those twenty five dollar winners. You're gonna feel good at the end of the week. Like you, you may not think a twenty five dollar winner on the day, then you're done is good, but I'm telling you at the end of the week, when you make 125 or 150 bucks because you took five trades and they're all winners and they're 25 bucks, that adds up. You know, it's March 2nd and you look at the end of March and you go, dude, 1K, I started with 250 bucks, I'm up to 600, 650. I'm gonna go see, it happens and it works. But people, they want a full pour SPX every single time and they want to get to 5K right away. And they they go 250 to 600, 250 to 800. And then like, I got this figured out and they full port again and they don't have a stop. They get an SPX and they knife down on calls. And now suddenly they're at 300 and it took them three weeks to build up to 600. And now they took this SPX and it wiped out their gains in one day, in five minutes and 10 minutes. And so it does not work. You guys, you cannot skip the steps. There's people that get lucky. Yes, but you cannot skip the steps, but you know, all the admins in here, they're always open to DMs. They will always help you as long as you ask for help. But we don't, we, we do not know you need help unless you ask us for help. But Latoya, going back to your position size, um, you know, 500, 1,000. You know, I flipped a port with $1,000 before. Obviously, my name started with 1K. I started with $1,000 in November 2020. I pushed up. I did really good. Shark, not going to blame him because he didn't push the buttons for me. He alerted some riot calls and I full ported and it went against us and I did not stop out and I blew my portfolio. And that was my first, in OT, that was my first official blown port. It was like uh, November, 2020 or something like that. Cause I, well, no, I started Black Friday, 2020. So early in the year, maybe it's 2021. But again, I skipped the steps. I took an alert. I didn't respect a stop loss that he said. And I went in heavy and I freaked out because that was real money on the line. And, you know, there's a saying, you know, once you get sick and tired of losing money is when you're going to make a change. And so you guys have to look at your P&L. Um, I didn't talk about a journal, but you got to keep a trading journal. Trading journal and your profit and loss on the screen does not lie. If your port goes up, they call it a bump and run where it goes up and down, up and down, up and down. If your port looks like that, you guys need to take a step back and say, hey, something is not working and I need help. And it's fine. You guys like, again, that's why we're here. But, um, you know, keep a trading journal. If you keep having $23 winners and 8% losses, $25 winner, 75% loss, you're going to keep going up like this. So a trading journal does not lie. You guys keep track of that. And you know, I don't need to know your port size or if you want to share it, that's fine. But if you keep saying, hey, I took this, I took this loss. You know, if you keep, if you, all you got to do is show me a trading journal. Um, and it's it's going to be right in front of us to look at to go over. And it's going to say, hey, you're obviously taking bigger position sizes, you know, and you're taking larger losses. You're taking these 40% losses and 10% winners. You know, that's one step forward, two steps back. You're never going to be profitable, you guys. And so you cannot skip the steps. Um, but again, I'm rambling, going back to your question. $250 is hard but doable 500 it's hard, but doable. One K is kind of that sweet spot where you can buy, you know, those slower moving contracts. Um, you can buy two or three of these. Like, let's just look at this. If you guys, we're going to, we're going to run late. That's right. Stick around. If you got time, if not, you can log off. Um, uh, doo -doo -doo. So we set this up last week. So, CCL, Carnival Cruise Lines, you know, small portfolio speaking. You can buy next Friday contract at the money, $36. You can buy 15 days of time, $52. Can you buy a Tesla two weeks out for 52 bucks? No. You can buy end of May. You have three, what is it, three or four weeks of time. So you can say, hey, I think Carnival Cruise Line is going to go up. I'm buying the 14 and a half call. I have three weeks of time to be right. I'm not saying let it go to 100 and then back up to make profit, but you guys have three or four weeks of time for $63, you guys, $63 buy-in. You have 22 days to expiration. Or you can buy a little bit shorter. So say you have a $500 portfolio and one case says no more than 10% of my port. Okay, I think CCL is going to go up. 
ten percent of five hundred, I'm gonna I'm gonna buy a fifty dollar contract. Okay, so that's that math right? Yeah, ten percent of five hundred. So I can buy one contract, or you can buy next week's contract. You can buy two. You'll be a little bit over in your position size, but you can buy two. So guess what? CCL pushes up. Say you bought this day. CCL pushes up tomorrow. You trim one at forty percent. You know, forty percent, thirty six bucks, whatever that is. And now again, like we talk about, now you can leave a runner. I wouldn't swing into a weekend, but this is just an example, you guys. So smaller portfolios, you guys like you can buy next week. Citigroup, this is banking, fifty five bucks, you guys. There's a reason. Like these pay you guys. Like people don't believe me. I preach this all the time, but like. Look at this move from Disney, you guys. Disney. Sell down, we hold, opening range low. I want to take the 112 call. I'm going to take the 112 call. Say you've bought the bottom. I'm going to buy it right. So the opening range is set. I want to buy it at 755 my time. I'm buying the 112 call. I buy the 112 call at what's down here. I buy 112 call for $27. This thing ran to $115 today. We're going off track, but again, I'm just proving it for people that have small ports, don't think this works. You got into play for 27 bucks and you bought three, you held one for a runner. Your runner went 336%. Has anybody posted 336% on Tesla today? No. Uh, NVIDIA, no. SPY, maybe, SPX, maybe. Disney. Like, again, 300%, it doesn't matter what it is. Disney, Delta, CCL. Like, who doesn't want these trades for $27, you guys? It works. And so, you know, you guys, the smart portfolios, DMs are always open. There's other people in here that, you know, they may not have a smart portfolio, but they trade these with me and with others every single day, every single week, because we like it and it's fun. You guys, like, this works. So, uh, LaToya circling back for the last time um yeah 500 bucks a thousand is really nice 250 300 500 bucks you gotta be a little patient but it but it is doable 100 bucks you're stuck for a little bit but 100 bucks port you can literally take one trade a day you're gonna have to take risk you know because it's got to be more than 10 percent of your port size you know you don't have to take a 50 dollar entry but it's doable but with patience and, and proper charting like you can you can build a hundred dollar portfolio it's possible not saying I've seen it, but it's doable. Uh, Shanks, I found that many zero TDs on Tesla are killing you. Yep. Uh, write down on your on your journal your profit loss of things that are born in your portfolio and your and your journal, and just cross those things out. You guys skip the things that um, that are not working for you. Um, all right. Last but not least, we went over it. I hinted. This is my challenge for you guys. Today's May second. Tomorrow's May third. Um, if you're comfortable posting your port size and you want to do a challenge, you want to do it right, you know, take a screenshot, um, of your port size and proper position size, every trade you take, or leave me just a trading journal and show me what you can do by the end of May 30th or whenever the last day of May is and prove to yourself and also me that proper position sizing works. You guys trading plans work. You know, stop losses work um, and watch where you're going to be 30 days from now. But again, it's on you guys when the money is real, when the money's on the line, you have to respect a stop loss. You cannot move it if your stop loss is 20% because that's support and that's and you're in calls. It has to be 20%. You can't move it. But my challenge to you and Panada, nah, you don't count, but you can do it, brother. But I've been calling this challenge out since November, since my first lecture, and no one sent it to me. I challenge you because you have to stay accountable. You cannot full port. If you have a thousand dollar port and you message me on Monday and your port is up 85%, you know, I'm happy, but that's cheating. You know, maybe you hit a huge runner, that's fine, but I want to see your entry and I want to see your your train journal prove it that you didn't full port something. I don't want a full port, full port challenge 30 days. I want proper position sizing on stuff we talked about, things flips talks about empanada. River, everybody, you guys, like it is doable. I know it's doable. I've seen people do it, but I want someone to challenge because, you know, it, it, it makes you, if you say, hey, I'm taking um, XLE calls here, my entry is 86 call. 
my stop loss is here under 84 and a half. What do you think of it? I'm saying I love it. Okay. And it's okay to text to, to DM me and say, you know what? I took an 18% stop. I'm like, you know what? That's fine. The stop, the, the setup was good. The, the timing was bad. And that's fine. That happens. Everybody takes losses. But when you DM someone and say, I'm taking XLE or I'm taking BAC or D DraftKings calls, whatever it is, when you send someone a DM and say, because a lot of people do this to me and I, I send it back to them, alerts I take, that holds you accountable that says, hey, you know, because when Empanada alerts a trade or flips, they're, they're confident in their trade and they have a plan, they have a stop loss. They're not just going to alert random stuff in their tab because they because it can go against them. And they're going to have all these people DMing them and, and failing. Oh, you, you said Apple, it's, it's down 80%. What are you doing? He says, good luck. No. On his chart, he says, I'm taking Apple calls here. Here's my profit targets. Here's my stop loss. And then it's up to you to manage that and, and, and follow that. And so, again, when you take a trade, Pretend that you're learning it to the, I told people some DMs, pretend you're learning the trade to the entire Discord. Is this a trade on SPY? If SPY pushes and you're saying, hey, I'm taking the break of retest at 501.50, I'm taking calls here. You know, send someone that DM because you are confident that, hey, the break and retest. When you tell someone you're getting in a trade and there's money on the line, that should be confidence enough that, you know, you've done your work and you're confident in this trade. Not, I'm taking calls here at the top of this huge 30 minute candle here. Cause what if we alert calls here and it comes down here like that on a zero DT, like you're hurting if someone alerts calls here on that, or you tell me, Hey, I'm taking 505 calls here at the top of this candle. And I'm going, well, you know, it opened, it opened here. It came down here. It pushed up and it closed here. So it opens here and say it immediately goes down. You're hurting. You know, if you learn that to Discord, people are going, hey, dude, what's up? You said 504 calls at zero DD. I'm down 65%. So you guys alert. You don't have to uh, say alert, but, you know, send DMs. You know, I don't care if you're taking one contract or 100, but say, I'm thinking of this here. What do you think? Here's my stop out. I'm going to say I like it, or maybe I don't like it. I would wait here, or I'm going to say I like it. You know, let me know when you take profit. And Send the screenshot to take profit. Again, not because you're bragging, but it's because you followed a trade plan, you guys. And I'm telling you, that's going to be the biggest confidence boost for you guys ever. You know, send a DM to whoever it is. Find a, another thing, find a mentor in the Discord, you guys. It could be me. It can be a yellow name. It can be a green name. It could be Tilio. It could be Dirty River. You know, personally, mine is River because he's a no BS kind of guy. You know, if I say, hey, I'm taking spy calls here, he's going to go, I love it. I'm with you, or you're going to say, why are you buying the top of this candle? Or that's a chase, you know, not for me. You know, he did, he doesn't, he doesn't BS, you know, I'm not, and I'm not going to do that either. If someone sends me a chart, I'm going to say, you know what? I think a better entry is down here. And so when you guys can find a mentor or trading buddies, you know, whether it's in DMs or in the chat, take trades together because it'll make you a better trader. I guarantee it. Because if someone knows you took that and you said 20% stop, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to deem you at the end of the day. So oh, actually didn't work out. I'm sorry. Did you stop out? And if you say yes, you better stop out and it better be in the trading journal. But if it's not, you're just lying to yourself and your, your port is just going to continue to bleed. You guys like losses happen, but they should be small enough that they don't, they don't mentally bother you. Like they're not fun, but your losses should be smaller than your winners and they should be, you know, tradable and you should be able to come back from them. You know, if you take a loss on, Tesla today. It should be small enough that it doesn't blow up your portfolio. And you say, you know what? I was in puts and I was wrong. And that's fine. If we come and break up to this level here, whatever it is, I might get them again. But if you take puts and you're really wrong and you full ported, now you're sitting out on the day, you have no buying power left and your port is down 65, 70%. And you're sitting there where everybody else is having fun. Now Tesla's pushing, Spy's pushing, all, everyone's making all this money, but you had no trade plan. And so I challenged you guys Someone do a 30-day challenge, send it to me. I don't care if it's a $100 port or $1,000, or if you don't want to share your port size, send me a legit trading journal. And I promise with risk management and help from others in here, like it'll work. I guarantee it'll work, you guys. Um, can you do bracket orders automatically? Yes, Bree. Um, what brokerage are you on? Um, I will show you that if you got the, well, shoot, market's closed, but. Um, okay. He's almost 
for you. Bree, which uh, which brokerage are you on, Bree? Let me know. Bree. I don't think I can do it because the market's closed, but I can show you, well, kind of show you where it's at, I guess. I have Thinkers. But on Weeble, um, go ahead. I have Thinkorswim. Yeah, there there is. Uh, we'll have to discuss it tomorrow or someone because I'm making a switch from Thinkorswim, actually. Uh, let me move this, make sure my calendar flow is not shown. Uh, but on Thinkorswim, you can definitely do it. And on Weeble, we actually found it um, last week. Where is it at here? Stocks option. Share quantity, share amount account size. Okay, I think I'm good here. So on Weeble, you can have a default and Thinkorswim is probably somewhat similar, but you can frequently use stop offset. So I need I need to go over this more, I don't think. Um, I need to find a stop loss on here. We found it in the last lecture, but you can set a default. So if you're like, you know what? They alerted Tesla calls and I gotta go to this meeting. Okay, I want a 20% stop. Like I said, I don't like blind stops, but I'd rather have a stop versus going to a meeting, being in calls and have your have your calls be down 100%. So you can set a bracket order. Um, we can discuss tomorrow on Thinkorswim. Swim. But you can, yeah, you can set an automatic bracket order on a trade, especially on Weeble. You can say, I want to enter XLE here. It's a 20%, I mean, I'm not showing it, but a 20% stop, 30% take profit. I got to go to meeting, ride or die. <laughs> Obviously, it's not the best risk management, but it's better than nothing. But you can set an automatic OCO, OCO hey, order. That's a tongue twister. One cancels get, other. Go we ahead. We are not seeing your your screen. Oh we yeah, I, your, I just, yeah, I, I just dragged over, yeah. Um, market's closed, you guys. I won't be able to do it on here, but, um, oh shit, it's right here, sorry. So I did add this last lecture. So if I, I wanna buy Disney 112, I can turn this on. And I can say, you know what? I want a Disney 30% stop and I want to take profit. Again, I don't like blind taking profit, but say I want 40%. I think Disney is going to run. They're going to get news, whatever it is. I'm confident that if I buy here, the opening range is, you know, 30% down here. So I know we're not going to break the opening range low of Disney. You can boom, you can turn this on. You can take the order and let it fly. And you check back your meeting. <laughs> you know, again, this runs what? 300%. That sucks, but guess what? You took profit at 30, so you entered at 27, and those contracts would have sold at, well, whatever, 30% is 35 bucks. So yeah, you would have left a bunch of money on the table, but again, you can do an automatic order here. I don't like it, but again, if you have to, you gotta go to a meeting or whatever the case is, Think or Swim does it, Robinhood, I don't know, but you can do automatic profit orders. Um, good question. Uh, let me check the chat, make sure I'm missing anything important. Oh, why are you switching to Thinkorswim? Um, so Thinkorswim does, I can't pull it up right now. I don't have it open. Thinkorswim does a lot of things that I like. Um, it's the whole market. Uh, Q, do you got a question? You got an open mic. If not, I'm going to mute you. Three, two, one. Okay, you're muted. Sorry. Um, Thinkorswim has, okay, so you hear me on trade floor constantly saying um, nine, SPY 9 EMA rejection on the, you know, putting parentheses on the daily. So that means on the daily time frame, the 9 EMA was around here, around this zone here. Was it? No, 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 no. Wait, or was it? Yeah, it was here. So the 9 EMA is somewhere around here. Um, on SPY, and I said, hey, we're pushing right up to it, we're rejecting. Or I think Zabes was like looking at calls and said, hey, there's a 98, nine moon average here on the daily. Weeble cannot plot out, uh, so I'm on the time, I'm on the 30 minute time frame, or if I go to the five minute, Weeble does not chart out where my daily moving average is. And I need to know that, I, I want to know that because there's many times early in my training career that we pushed and we rejected somewhere, I'm like, why do we reject her so hard? I mean, obviously it's a pre-market level, but it's like, also if you go to spy on the daily, um, uh, yeah, it's ugly. Let me turn off charts here because you guys will laugh. So, all right. So spy daily is this purple line here, you guys. 
which was 50447. 50447, remember that number? So this is the daily 9MA. And it, and it rejects, and we bounce off this stuff, and there's lots of times where I miss entries here. 504, oh wait, sorry. 504, why is it gonna turn back on? 47. Yeah, this zone here is where we rejected. So to get to your question, to get your point, on thinkorswim on a five minute chart, I can leave the nine moving average on the daily up and know where it's at. I can know where the 200 is. So um, not calling out Grizzlies because he's the goat, but he alerted calls. We sold for a loss. I took it too. That's fine. But let's look at here. Look at this, you guys. So let's look at this zone here and where it bounced. It's ugly, I know. This yellow line, you guys. This yellow line is the 200 MA. We got calls and we cut at the 200 MA. If you guys don't know, the 200 moving average over time, like that is kind of on a long term, on a 200 day moving basis, is kind of your your line in the sand, so to speak. Like, hey, if we're of if we're over the 200 and the red is the 50 day moving average, like. I'm not going to say you're guaranteed bullish, but for the last 200 days, you bought shares, you are in profit. If you're under the 200-day moving average, that is a very, very bearish position. But my point is, I will all the time, every time, if I see this, like look right where this candle closed here, I will take a call bounce at the 200 every single time. Or uh, there's another one. What is it? Roblox, RBLX. If we are down under the 200, I will take this region. If we, we open here, we push, I will take a short position every single time of the 200 day moving average, every single time. And look at, look at where we bounce on Roblox, like to the penny, 200 day moving average. So again, to circle back to get to your point, on Think or Swim, it's really awesome. You can turn the 200 day moving average, whatever moving average you want, on a multi time frame example. So, like this is the nine EMA, but it's on an intraday time frame. I don't know where the nine daily is. I don't know where the 20 day daily is. That was one of my favorite things on Think or Swim that you can do. That is, it sounds little, but it's, it is such a huge, it is such a huge thing for me to trade around. I profited so much. You know, granted, it's been on paper the last two or three weeks you know, set up think or swim, but it, it is profiting me so much money. You know, we sell down on something. Oh, we're, we're, we're coming down. We're coming down. It's like, no, the nine MA, the nine moving average is right here. You guys or whatever it is. As an like, example, it's like, that is a hard bounce. Like, um, stuff like that. on think or swim, um, trailing stop on think or swim. You can do, you cannot do that on Weeble as of now for option contracts. Uh, think or swim. What else can you do? I don't know. Wow, we're running 90 minutes over. You guys are still sticking around. You guys are awesome. I'm rambling. Let me look at the questions, guys, but my throat is dry. Um, let's see. Very easy to use. Yeah, Panada. Yep. Think your swim just takes time, you guys. It's a learning curve. Um, me, I started two or three weeks ago really diving into it. I built basically, I built a layout to look just like this as close as I can. And I just been paper trading with flips every single day. And I just paper trade to get the muscle memory going. I get the the, the motions going on it before I put in real money in the account. Um, yeah. Yeah, Brady, it's intimidating. To, uh, it's learnable. There are levels. Yeah. Hired someone. Yeah. All right, guys. It looks like that's all the questions, man. You guys, you guys are awesome. We went freaking 30 minutes over and you guys are still here. I love you all. You know, you stuck around. Hope, hope you guys learned something. But again, the DMs are open. Um, I hope I didn't sound cocky with anything. Like anything is easy. Trading is not, you know, charting is easy, but the emotion part of it is hard. So you guys, DMs are always open. DM River, DM someone you trust. Um, but ask for help. It's okay. Like I said, I don't need to know how much you've lost in the last two weeks or three years. I don't care. That's, that's personal. I don't need to know your port size, but just say, hey, 
I need some help, or I like this chart, I like this stock, I want to trade this, what do you think? Or someone alerted this to the tab, I can't get a hold of them, what would be your stop out? You know, I'll help you, but you guys got to put in some work. But I appreciate you guys all. If you guys are new, hopefully you learned something. The regulars, you guys are awesome. But uh, let's have a great Friday, guys. Let's end it right. And with that, I am signing off. Later. <laughs>